Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with some introductions about ourselves as the presenters. Hi, I'm Dolly Frank. I'm the Florida Electronic Library Administrator and also for the time being, the Interim FLIP Coordinator, Florida Library Youth Program Coordinator. And I'm Katrina Harkness. I'm the Adult Learning Consultant. And I'm Amy Kipler, the Continuing Education Coordinator. So welcome to the Real Florida Reader Town Hall. Um, like we said, this session is being recorded, but will be unlisted on our YouTube channel until after the program has officially launched. So we'll be sending out the recording later. Um, okay. Um, so what is the Real Florida Reader State Park Day Pass program? Um, this is something that we're piloting as a summer long initiative in conjunction with the Oceans of Possibility Summer Program. Uh, the program is a result of a partnership between Florida State Parks, the Florida Department of State's Division of Library Information Services, and you all, the public libraries throughout Florida. And we're hoping that it will help promote the exploration of our Florida State Parks and public libraries and we're also hoping that this will increase use of parks, but also increase library card sign up and checkouts and patrons knowledge of your other services and programs really a way for you guys to kind of get the word out about yourselves as well as this program. Um, so for every library, um, what we've done is every library location within a system is going to be given to park passes each. Um, this does not include bookmobiles but you can reallocate and kind of divvy up your park passes however you'd like them to be. Um, so for example, Land County has seven library locations. They'll be given 14 park passes, but they can assign those to whatever branches they like. Um, so the Northeast branch can get five passes, whereas Woodville could get one. So it's really up to them how they want to do it. And same with you. If you'd like for it to be a different way, you certainly can do that. Um, so we have received the passes today. We're going to be mailing them out as soon as we possibly can. As also with the passes, we will be giving a sample poster, a brochure, and a checklist just um, for you to have something with information that we're going to be covering today on it. Um, we will be mailing out the passes to the main libraries. If you would like them, especially if you're a part of a cooperative, if you'd like them to be mailed to another location, please let us know. Um, you can email our continuing education BLD email, which we'll give to you later. Um, and you can certainly just let us know what branch is a better location to mail them to. Um, and also um, we'll be emailing out when they'll be on their way, when we've actually mailed them so that you know when to expect them in the mail. And then we'll be sending another email as well when it, it, it's officially been launched and there's been a press release about it. Um, we're waiting to see if the Secretary of State or another top official from state parks or elsewhere is going to do an actual event or press release for it. So we'll, we'll let you know for sure when that will happen um, through email. And if you'd like for other staff other than yourselves to be included on those emails, please also let us know either in the chat here today or also at our continuing education email, um, which we'll share with you later and we can add them to our mailing list. Um, so as you can tell, um, based on this slide, there are up to eight people allowed in a vehicle for free entry into a state park with the pass. Um, it's for day use only, and it does it is valid from May 21st through September 12th. The launch itself might not happen May 21st. Well, like we just said a moment ago, we'll email you and let you know when, we, when the actual official launch has happened and when we can start um, checking them out to patrons. Um, so we'll definitely keep you apprised of any information. And then just a few notes about the program itself. So like I said, um, it allows for single day use entry for one passenger vehicle, up to eight people in a vehicle. Um, so it just covers the entrance fee into the state park. It doesn't cover activity fees or entry into special events. Museums, boat tours, boat launching, kayaks, canoes, nothing that has an extra fee associated with it, it won't cover those. Um, there's also three exclusions when it comes to state parks. 
the Ellie Schiller Homosassa Springs Skyway Fishing Pier and the Weeki Wachi Springs State Parks are not included on those. All the other ones, though, it will let you in for free into those state parks. Um, and then, as you can see, this is a Florida State Parks program, so it won't be accepted at a local municipal or county park, federal park, national forest, or national wildlife refuge. Um, if you live near a state park that has an honor box, what patrons can do is they can take one of the blue slips from the honor box, write Real Florida Reader on it, and put it in the honor box, and then keep their Real Florida Reader pass and hang it on their mirror or on their dashboard. That way the park knows that someone's entered with it and they can also have the actual pass that they've checked out on their dashboard or hanging from their mirror. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Katrina. Okay, and there are... Um, how long is the circulation period for the park pass gonna be? This is, this is your choice, it's up to you whether you want people to uh, be able to check it out for one day, three days, five days a week. Um, can holds be placed on the park pass or will it be first come first serve? Um, Georgia has elected, just to give you an example, not to allow holds to be placed on the passes, but this is completely your local decision. For um, late or lost passes, we encourage you not to charge a fee for a lost pass as we will be replacing passes that are lost um, until we run out of them. We have a limited number of replacement passes, but we'll, we'll work with you to replace those. And, and so we suggest not charging a, a late fee or a, or a lost fee for those. Um, please report any lost passes to our continuing education BLD at dos.myflorida.com. Um, some other uh, decisions for your library to make um, about, oh, um, something else to let you know about the passes. We do have an example of Mark Record catalog uh, so that you can use that. And I'll put that link into the chat that's on uh, OCLC. Also, if you're in Flynn Sherrod, uh, you can get the link from Flynn Sherrod. I'll put those, both those in the chat. Um, programming available, the Florida Department of Children and Families has a water safety for kids program that is available free at your library. So come and bring books and bookmarkers and have a speaker. Um, many of the speakers are former Olympic swimmers. And so water safety is really important around the theme of oceans of possibility. And of course the parks themselves have many programs and, and many of you have already partnered with your local parks having rangers come in to, to present about what's available at the parks. They also have, um, programs that are available online. There's a junior ranger program that's available both in person and virtually. They have geocaching, um, different activities at all the state parks. So I'll put some of those links in the chat for you. Oh, and webcams for things like the manatee so you can keep an eye on what's going on around the state. Hey, this is Dolly. And uh, it wouldn't be a library program. It wouldn't be complete without some statistics now, would it? This is a pilot program. We're very happy to be able to uh, partner with the parks on this. And the parks and we both would like to know what kind of uh, use and um, reception these passes are going to get. So we would like you to be able to tell us, we would like you to tell us uh, separately in a little statistics form that we're gonna be sending out at the end of the summer. Um, just a little quick woo foo. How many did you, how many park passes did you circulate? Um, the nice thing is, is that you can also count these. For example, if you have a library of things, your circulation for your annual, annual statistical report. So you can include those in your other circulation stats as well. We just need you to uh, report them to us separately. Uh, so that we can use those statistics to continue, hopefully, uh, this program on maybe uh, for another summer or maybe even make it a year round initiative to, to keep it on going. So when I said at the end of the summer, uh, we started this initiative as part of the Florida Library Youth Program, summer, uh, summer reading program, Oceans of Possibilities. And so it's just for the summer that these passes are going to circulate uh, 
even the passes will say that the end date is September 12th. Uh, so the, the statistics will be just over the summer that you need to catch it, um, capture. And the state parks won't accept the passes after September 12th. So uh, Kat mentioned some fun resources that uh, the parks have. We also have come up with some marketing materials, some resources for patrons, uh, more information on a website that we haven't launched yet. It's not live because we're waiting for the official launch date that, that Amy talked about. Um, we're not sure how that's gonna look. We may have a soft launch before the hard launch, it's a possibility. Um, so it could be that when you get the passes, you aren't gonna have to keep them super secret, but uh, the, the website is not yet live, but we do have some screenshots that Amy's going to share. So um, this is what the library staff webpage looks like. Um, and you'll see on the first page, there's two pages that you can uh, go to. And the first page is just really going over the program itself, all, all the things that we talked about today. And then at the bottom, you'll also see checklists and information for libraries. And at the very top of that, you'll see a read more about the activities and resources at Florida State Parks. And that goes to this resources page. And what this does is it has links to accessibility at Florida Parks and recreation areas, as well as camping and lodging events, um, things about the state parks. It also has some downloadable activity sheets that we've created here um, in the Bureau of Library Development, a scavenger hunt, a bucket list, and a K through five activity packet that you can hand out to patrons. Um, there's also some fun activities from the Florida State Parks that are family friendly that you can also share with patrons as well. Um, and then unfortunately we have um, a public facing Web page, which will be on all of our promotional materials. The, right now, the state parks have it hidden. Um, it's not live, and unfortunately, we don't have screenshots of it. But it will have all of the information about the program. It points people to go to their public libraries to check out the passes. And then it also has a wonderful map showing where all of our public libraries are in the state of Florida and then where all of our state parks are. So patrons can use that to discover new public uh, new public libraries or new parks that are near their libraries that they use. There will also be a link on there to accessibility and um, the state parks have told us they were um, very strongly suggested that we point patrons to calling whatever state park they plan on visiting in order to really know the accessibility um, options there for them. Um, There'll also be some other, um, a checklist for you. You'll receive that in the mail, but it'll also be here on this website too, in case you need to look back at it. Um, and there'll also be some social media graphics that you can use on your social media um, to promote this program. Does anyone have any questions at this time? And, and just to say that, um, there will be all of the rules that we went over, like the exclusions for the state parks and you know, eight people to a vehicle, the blue honor slip instructions. Those are all on the promotional materials that we'll be um, sharing with you too. Um, so it's not, this isn't you know, secret information or things we don't have to verbally say to people. These will be on like written documents that you can hand the patrons as well, as well as the website. So it'll be on there too. And another question we had from yesterday, and just in case anyone's um, typing right now, was if they'll be automatically sent. The passes will be automatically sent to you. Um, but if you do have another library location, like we mentioned earlier, other than the main library that you would like them mailed to, please let us know um, by using that email we shared out earlier, um, just so that we have the, the appropriate address to send them to. You want to pop back to that? Slide. There you go. Yeah. So if you've got questions, you can send the questions to this email or, or call that phone number. Um, we're, one of the things that we had originally thought to do was for the library cooperatives that we would send all of the passes straight to the main uh, headquarters of the, the cooperative so they could send out the, the passes. 
but um, not all the cooperatives circulate their items the same way or catalog their items the same way. And so we, we definitely want to hear from the cooperatives if you want us to send to the individual libraries, member libraries in your cooperative, or if we, you want us to send to your headquarters. So um, as we're getting ready to mail these things out, I'm, I'm, in fact, I left working on the mailing label list as I left to come to this webinar to figure out. So you know, we're going to be we're going to be slapping labels on envelopes probably tomorrow. So um, yes. Um, and we have a question. Which website will the promotional materials be available on? I understand it might not be published yet. And it's this one right here, the, uh, the first one under resources, the info.florida.gov one. And it's it's not published yet, but that's where all the, you'll be able to print promotional materials as well as the social media graphics you can use. And that will be included in the emails you get from us. We'll send those that link in every email. And the, the nice thing is, is the, the web page is, as you, as you saw from the slides that Amy was showing, the web page is ready to go. All we have to do is click the on button. We're just waiting for the go ahead. Um, I, I don't know if you might have heard the news, but uh, yesterday was uh, Secretary Lee's last day. So uh, we, we sort of got pushed back to square one because the new secretary is um practically trying to learn a new job and and we hadn't quite figured out what the next step will be yet so he's very interested in fact interestingly enough uh, uh he, he knows about this this program and is very interested in being a part of it he just has to see if he can clear his schedule to, to be able to launch it um one of the questions that came up uh yesterday is will there be passes for bookmobiles um we're allotting two passes per outlet that doesn't include bookmobiles in the count but it's up to your local decision where you want to put those passes so if you have an outlet that's particularly close to the park or for some reason is going to be more accessible for your patrons it you can divvy up those pa uh, passes that you get and put them at, at in your bookmobiles and in whatever outlet you think is going to be most useful for your patrons so the new secretary is started today it's a uh, representative Cord Bird is the new Secretary of State. He, uh, uh, in fact, interestingly enough, I, I chatted with Secretary Lee yesterday, and she's here today taking the new Secretary through the ropes. So, we have another question. Do you have an image of what the pass looks like? I assume we could barcode label it. Yes, there is a space at the bottom for you to put a barcode on it. Um, um, we, we, we have the passes. Um, I could grab one if you wanted to turn the camera on. There, there was one in here. I don't know what happened to it. We're gonna go grab a pass and we'll share it with you. We'll just show it on the camera. Um, we just got them in. So, um, and then we do have some professionally printed posters as well that we will be sharing with you. Um, there aren't too many, but we'll be giving you the PDF version as well that you can print out um, and put up at other libraries too. And then there is um, going to be a hashtag. I don't know if, if your libraries use hashtags, but um, we here at the Department of State and the Florida State Parks will be using the hashtag Real Florida Readers. Um, so if you'd like to use that hashtag, you're, you're more than welcome to and encourage your patrons to use that um, hashtag as well. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a moment so we can use the video. Can turn the L on. And here it comes. Nope, oh, it's backwards. That's interesting. Yep. Here's the this way here we go there's there it is so there's front and back it's a hanging and it, it opens at the top so that it can go over your mirror you can put it on the dashboard so nice and big so that it, it shouldn't get lost and as you can see down here at the bottom there's a place for a barcode 
we made sure to leave a space for a barcode down there. It's a, it's a little dark, I realize. I hope you can see okay. We hadn't been planning on sharing, but there it is. I feel like Vanna. There we go. <laughs> And the question came up, can you laminate them? You can, absolutely. Help yourself. They're, I, they're made out of 130 pound um, cardstock. So they're relatively stiff. They're not as stiff as we'd like them to be, but they only need to last three months. Um, when, and I'm gonna say when we go to a longer time frame or make it more permanent, I have my eyes on a more permanent uh, type of card that um, that we'll try that's made out of a different type of material. Um, but but this was this this was a very quick turnaround, and they didn't have to special order it for the printing. So. <laughs> Yeah, there is another question. Are you able to share why the three state parks were excluded? I just ask in case we are asked since we are a neighbor to Citrus where the L.A. Schiller Park is located. Um, I can say that parallels the policy of their regular annual pass. Um, I don't know why. I, I would assume that those parks are a little more expensive to enter. And um, this, this pass, the special pass, is the same as a regular yeah. annual pass holder. Yeah, Homosauces has the, the zoo, so it's a pricey park to get into. The fishing pier, I think, is extremely crowded and very popular. Um, I've never been to Ellie Schiller. I think I need to go. Um, but I, it's probably either a little more expensive or very crowded, or both. And I'll tell you one of the things I, I'm a little I'm a little surprised that Amelia Island wasn't included because that's one of my favorite parks and it's also a little expensive to get into and a little crowded and it is part of the deal it is part of the package. Yes, oh I bet it is, Julie. I bet it is. Absolutely. So any any other questions okay I'll let you all know this partnership has been oops i missed it it went away sorry it says just to let you all know this partnership has been a long time in coming but once the powers that be made the decision to move forward we move forward quickly huge kudos to dolly amy and katrina and that's from claudia our bureau chief here oh can i grab this question Will there be a complete list of available parks on the website yes and even better there is an interactive map that will show all the state parks in green and all the libraries in orange side by side and you can see what's close to your location and available around the state. And it's great because it, you can zoom in, you can toggle, um, you can turn off all the state parks, you can turn off all the libraries. It, it, makes the, it makes the state look extremely inviting between libraries and parks. I tell you, we are a greatly populated Park and Library State. And that map will be linked on the, the public website, the, the second one you see, the floridastateparks.org slash real Florida reader. Um, and the other nice thing, I, uh, Kat, I think somebody talked about the accessibility earlier, and um, we will have a link on our website, and, and the state parks will have a link on their website. Um, they also have a list of all of the accessible uh, parks, um, or the, 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 I should say the, the parks that have made special accommodations for accessibility. Um, not every single park is as accessible as every others, but they've made a lot of real um, headway with a lot of them. So there's a list of those parks that are extremely um, accessibility friendly that they will also have a list that is going to be separate that, that folks can go through and, and see which parks are, which amenities are available at which parks. Right, and, and the parks uh, recommend that you contact the specific park that you're interested in visiting, but they have a wide variety. Um, not every 
accommodation is available at every park, but they do have um, lifts available for the springs. They've got um, uh, motorized vehicles for the beaches. The dune buggy, the, dune buggy the, tires, the, yeah. wide, the wide uh, tires, and they only have a few of those at each location, one or two. So, so they do suggest calling ahead to see what's available. Um, but they've they've been working really hard to make to make their parks accessible and to include accessible trails. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? So as, as I said, we're going to be mailing this out um, shortly, hopefully this week, we'll get those packages in the mail. Uh, I know that some folks, libraries get a lot of random circulars and flyers and packages. So uh, keep your eyes open for, for hours. Don't, don't accidentally think it's a circular. And so I wanted to give a shout out to Casey Shiley, who's the former FLIP consultant who rekindled this discussion with the state parks through the Department of State's office. And Nancy asked, can we use a receipt instead of the pass you provide? Um, we have not worked that out with the parks. Uh, no, I know that that is a way that other park passes and museum passes and zoo passes are done. Um, instead of doing that, what we've done is we've printed up some extras of these passes. And if somebody doesn't bring one back or it gets destroyed or they spill, it floats away on the tide, just let us know and we'll send you another one. And, and maybe we'll work something out the next time through when we, we, we are going to be doing more if, if this continues, which I, I hope it will. I'm very excited about it. Um, we'll do some more work with the parks because they want to set some things up on their end that they haven't had a chance to do, like have their barcode. So when you get there, they can scan and get their own circulation stats, but they haven't been able to do that. So it could be that we'll have to work all sorts of different things out and maybe a receipt with a barcode on it would work that they could they could they could use but at this point um i think it's the the park pass is going to be our best bet for for this this pilot program And you can always send us additional questions to the um, continuing education email as well. And we'll, we'll all be checking it. So you can always send them there too if you think of one after the session. Um, and again, if you want anyone else to be added to any email communications or you want them sent to a different location, you can always email that email and we'll, we'll set it up that way. And I think that's everything that we have for the material that we were going to present to you. Um, we will hang around to answer questions. If you have uh, think of anything else you'd like to ask, we'll, we'll be here for a few more minutes. But that's that's the end of what we have to conclude. So sure. Yeah. So we're very thankful for all of you to be a part of this program and for Casey for starting the conversation back up. So we're really excited for this program to get started. Yeah, thank you. Everybody. And if you have time, we have a, a survey that you can take about today's call. Um, if there's any feedback you'd like to give us, then we can make it stronger for next time.